I dare you to kiss the prettiest girl in the room on the lips. And notice I charitably said girl and not person, because let's face it, I'd smoke all you bitches. This movie absolutely makes me want to throw up in a good and a bad way. That's why I have ginger seltzer water. That's not why. I just have a lot of nausea because we're on a new SSRI. I'm trying them all out like every single one that's under the sun so that I could do an SSRI review. Um, I'm hoping to get it ready for like the middle of 2023. Hopefully by then I'll have tried them all out and then I can do a proper review video. Sorry guys, it's just really time consuming and taking a lot of time, but I appreciate the wait uh, for the SSRI review video. Anyway, I'm titling the video I tried every SSRI so that you don't have to. Speaking of SSRIs, today we're talking about Perks of Being Wallflower. This movie came out 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I went to the theater three times. The first time I went with my best friend Kaylee and we are trauma bonded because of it. That's why we are still friends to this day. And then I remember I went one day like and I watched it like twice in one day. I did not become a woman when I got my period. Okay, which was actually on Halloween. So everyone say happy period anniversary, Nicole. Thank you. I did not become a woman when I got my period. I became a woman when I watched Perks Being Wallflower for the first time. Something within me shifted. Something within me realized, oh my God, I'm gonna grow up to be a depressed person. I'm fine. I'm genuinely really fine. Like I said, we're trying every SSRI under the sun. This movie touched me in ways that I can't talk about online without getting demonetized. And I'm sure that it has touched you as well. The book also like wrecked me as far as I remember, but I'm also getting to the age where I'm starting to forget the last names of people I went to high school with, which is like a really sad sign that I'm like getting older you know and getting a fucking life and also maybe that i should get back on omega-3 supplements because my memory should not be that bad at 23 but anyway so i don't remember the book that well but something tells me that it has a very similar plot to the movie anyway if you don't know perks of being wallflower is a coming of age movie my absolute favorite i love coming of age movies because i myself have never come of age. I am still a teenage 23 year old. This movie is about a boy named Charlie. He's a freshman in high school who was recently discharged from a mental health care institution. He writes these letters to a friend who is never named, but you can kind of assume it's also, you know, directed towards the audience. Sometimes he hand writes them, sometimes it's on his little typewriter. Keep in mind, this movie is set in the 90s. However, it was made in 2012. Anyway, when he's speaking to his dear friend, he's talking about his highs, his lows, and especially the main focus is the new friends who he made when he entered high school. Now, a huge key point in this movie is that it shows his struggles with PTSD. PTSD girlies, rise up! And I wish, but I'm not talking about pussy tits sucking dick. That's my girl group for the weekend. I'm talking about post-traumatic stress disorder. Ugh, boring. As someone who is now diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and a huge advocate for mental health, I love talking about mental health on my channel. It's really important to me. It really affects me and I feel like it's important to talk about it. So I love being a mental illness advocate. I am an advocate for mental illness. I love mental illness. I love bulimia. Mental illness is here to stay. Anyway, I'm not a huge movie watcher, okay? I'm the type of person that when I watch a movie, I like to watch the same movie over and over and over again. It's saying something that I cannot watch this movie over and over and over again, even though I love it so much. Like, yes, I did watch it two times in the theater when it first came out, but you will not catch me watching this movie very often. I'll talk about that more later. But anyway, however, this is one of the first movies that I have ever seen that does such an accurate portrayal of mental illness and PTSD and trauma. And I didn't even know it at the time, okay? Like, this is all just like a reflection. I just remember being 13 and sitting in that movie theater and being like, I relate to this guy and I don't know why. I can't put my finger on it. I don't know why this movie means so much to me. Hmm, suspicious. Anyway, Charlie makes some amazing friends who accept him, take him under their wing. And make him not feel like a wallflower after all. I felt like this movie deserved a whole dedicated video on my channel because 95% of my friends are on SSRIs and 
fucking love this movie. And the 5% who are raw dogging life and are not on any type of medication, uh, they have never even seen this movie. And guess what? They're better off for it. They're better people. They're better than I am, that's for sure. And happier. Anyway, I just want to dive in and kind of do a little movie commentary and talk about why this is such an immaculate movie. And I don't know where that was going. <laughs> I want to dive into this movie and appreciate it for what it is, okay? As I get older, every single time I rewatch this movie, the more I relate to it. Or I, maybe I see a part of myself in a character that I never have before. And all the things that I didn't understand when I was 13 years old and watching the movie, I now do, unfortunately. And that's why I think that this movie is so special because no matter who you are, you will probably relate to at least one character within this movie, whether it's Charlie or a family member or a friend, whatever. With that, let's dive in. Today's sponsor is probably the most on-brand thing that I've ever done on my entire channel ever. Today's video is sponsored by Established Titles. If you didn't know, Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland, all while helping global reforestation efforts. In Scotland, landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. Established Titles plants a tree with every order and works with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. This is my certificate. It literally says Lady Nicole Raffi. Um, I got this before I even got my college diploma. I graduated two years ago and I still don't have my college diploma, but I have this and this is much better in my opinion. Now I can officially include Lady on my credit cards, plane tickets, dating apps, sorry Adam. And it's a great lesson to give considering that the holidays are coming up. Hold on, I need to put mine up. Yeah. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. Depending on how many of you become a lord or lady, uh, we can start our own little nasty kingdom over there in Scotland, all right? It's gonna be very fun. <laughs> Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now, so if you need to do a last minute gift of sorts, you can use my code Nicole to get an additional 10% off the sale that's already happening. Go to establishedtitles.com slash Nicole to get your gifts now and help support the channel and create our little nasty kingdom together. Thank you, Established Titles. So I have a plan. As I enter the school for the first time, I will visualize what it will be like on the last day of my senior year. 1,385 days from now. Unfortunately, without even realizing, I also did this on my very first day of school. High school, I mean, and also college, honestly. I had a really hard time visualizing what the last day of both of those days felt like because I felt like I wouldn't make it. Not like, oh, oh. Oh, oh, like not like that. <laughs> you catch my drift. Um, but more so in like, uh, I was very, very afraid of um, imminent death, nuclear war, something that I just simply could not escape. Okay. It was always in the back of my head and I just could not picture myself. Like I can picture myself what I'm going to do tomorrow. I know tomorrow I'm going to hang out with my friend, but when it comes to like far out plans. Don't ask me about a five-year plan. I don't do that. But I remember standing outside as a freshman and thinking to myself, oh my God, I have four years and then it's going to be over. Like it's, it's going to be over soon. And I do that still to this day. Like when I am hanging out with a group of friends or if I'm having a really good time, I think to myself, oh my God, this thing is going to be over. And I'm going to be really sad about it. Like this moment will end. I'm really happy right now. And this moment will end. And I end up ruining it for myself. I catch myself doing it all the time. I am not present. And me knowing that that moment will be over soon and can never be recreated. And I will probably not be happy in that exact same way ever again. It haunts me. Relatable. This movie's relatable. My last class of the day is advanced English. And I'm really excited to finally learn with the smartest kids in the school. Nice trapper keeper. I just included that because why was she so angry? Do you know what a trapper keeper is? It's a binder. This bitch is mad about a binder. Everyone has binders. 
It's like, yeah, obviously, like, school bullies exist. Why were you so angry that someone owned a binder? A literal normal binder. Um, like, damn dumbass, maybe if you owned a binder, then maybe you would know the answer to the question that the teacher's about to ask, and then you wouldn't have to take the pop quiz. Mm. If my parents ask me about it, I probably won't tell them the truth because I don't want them to worry that I might get bad again. If my Aunt Helen were still here, I could talk to her. And I know she would understand how I'm both happy and sad, and I'm still trying to figure out how that could be. When I was younger, I never understood that term like getting bad again. And I was like, what does he mean? Like, what does he mean by that? Because I, I didn't know. And my, oh my, is that relatable? How I'm both happy and sad and I'm still trying to figure out how that could be. I never caught that line before. Boom, my God! I don't want to go through this whole video and be like, wow, so true. Every line is so relatable. But actually looking back and trying to like analyze every single line word for word, I was like, wow, this is a very intentional and beautiful movie. Almost as if there was a book before it. Thanks, Derek. I'm sorry, the kid's a pussy. I can't stand him. There's a reoccurring theme on my channel that I really like funny dads. Like, I did the Stranger Things video. Mike Wheeler's dad, hilarious. Fucking Charlie's dad, hilarious. Sorry, the kid's a pussy. I can't stand him. I love that. Um, I just fucking love funny dads. My dad's a little funny. He's so funny. He's so fucking silly. He, like, got up and left. He's so fucking funny like that. Hey, babe. This next one might be a little sad, but it reminded me of your eyes. Sing me to sleep. Sing me to sleep. What part of that song reminds you of her eyes? I would love to know. What part? What part, Ponytail Derek? Does this, does the song Asleep by the Smiths remind you of her eyes, okay? The whole time Morrissey is singing about wanting to die. That's all he's singing about. Death. And you're like, reminding me of your eyes. He is a pussy. Anyway, the song Asleep like haunted me. Like it was like a truly terrifying song. The second that it would come up like on my playlist or on my CD because I had the Perks Being Wallflower CD. Got it as a gift. I would skip it. I'd be like, absolutely not. I cannot fall into a deep depression right now. I love the Smiths. <laughs> I said I love the Smiths. I'd rather sit naked on a hot grill than endure any of the scenes with Asleep in it because you know it's gonna be sad. But anyway, the entire soundtrack of the movie is so hauntingly beautiful. The fact that Charlie is making such a massive effort to still put himself out there, even though he has no reason to actually put himself out there. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to these games alone. He's doing everything on his own props to him when i was in high school and if i wanted to go to a high school football game which i went to a lot of those okay believe it or not if i did not have a whole game plan of what we were all wearing seven friends that i could sit with then i was not going okay mm -mm. charlie is a role model clearly he is trying and he is trying to immerse himself into the high school experience which i give major props for <laughs> Hey, thanks for paying, Charlie. Oh, no problem. Thank you guys for the ride. Maybe I'll see you around in school. God, you just turn it down. You're gonna make his death. So be it. It's rock and roll. I wish nothing more. Do you want to be in it? Come on. Come on, we're talking about depression. Come up here. You're like the mascot therapy animal for this channel. Come on. I wish nothing more. Uh oh, do you have something to say? Sorry, I didn't ask. I wish nothing more as a child to have, okay, friends like them. And it's really cool. I no idea. No need to brag. I feel like I have a very great supportive friend group that I uh, always wanted. And it's very nice to look back because like 13 year old me would have been like, I will never have friends like this. I don't know. It comes in due time. They're most likely not in your hometown. And it's likely people that you will never think that you will ever meet. Those kind of friend groups are truly the best. Do you always want to be a mama's boy, Derek? Like I am not a mama's boy. You are, because every single time I go to your house, every single time. Uh, I hate this scene more than anything. I hate Ponytail Derek with a burning passion. This scene was always extremely triggering. Never want to watch. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. It added so much to the movie because... You can clearly see how much it affects Charlie and kind of the guilt that he takes on himself 
uh, throughout the film because of what is happening to his sister. But Jesus Christ, is it like very jarring for me? I hate her. How big of a wallflower are we considering Charlie if he is able to show up to all of these events alone? I guess that's kind of like the one unrealistic thing about this movie is that Charlie is supposed to be this anxious person who has had a lot of trauma, but is still able to show up to all these events alone, which don't really match his personality at all. So um, that's not really realistic. Also, another unrealistic thing is that all of these outsiders and wallflowers are all really attractive and they're all friends with one another and uh at what point do like a bunch of outsiders become insiders when they're in one big group uh, this movie doesn't need criticism okay <laughs> okay charlie charlie what do you think about high school high school <laughs> bullshit this kid is crazy Mary Elizabeth, I think you're really gonna regret that, you know, sure. haircut when you look back at old photographs. 13 year old me was so excited to smoke weed because of this movie. I was like, it's gonna be so fun, it's gonna be so chill, I'm gonna be in someone's basement and I'm gonna be smoking weed and I'm gonna eat a pot brownie and blah, 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 blah. And do you know what weed is actually like for me? Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Like, it, it's non existent, so. My best friend Michael, his dad was a big drinker, so he hated all that stuff. Parties too. Well, where is Michael tonight? Oh, he shot himself last May. Kind of wished he left a note, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, I feel like if this made its way onto TikTok today, someone would be like, ooh, trauma dumping. <laughs> about this recently but imagine my horror when I have grown up my whole life kind of feeling like Charlie from Perks Being a Wallflower like it doesn't help that you know I watch this as a young age and whatever and every single time that something happens I'm like oh that was such a Charlie moment but recently within the last month I found myself alone at a Rocky Horror Picture Show because my friend was in it and I'm sitting there and I'm like crying a little bit and I'm like oh my god I'm like having another Charlie moment. My fucking friend's upstage being slutty and Rocky Horror. It's Jake. It's Jake. I love Rocky Horror so much, but it will never not remind me of this. To absolute pleasure, the warm waters of sin, the also, I had to come to terms with that Ezra Miller as Frankenfurter was my sexual awakening. And also Pleakley in drag. So there's like a consistent theme here if you guys haven't noticed. Why did Ezra Miller have to end up being a shit person? I had the fattest crush on Ezra Miller. Like, it's because of this. It's because of them dressed up as Frankenfurter. Be it. That was me. That was me. That picture is gorgeous, Craig. What did you use? Oh, I know. Thank you. The color film, but black and white paper for things. My, uh, my professor gave me an A, but for all the wrong reasons. You'll see what I mean when you get to college. Craig is every fucking single Philly man ever. Especially the ones who attended Tyler's School of Art at Temple University. You know who you are. If you want a man like Craig, just go to West Philly. You'll find one. Don't worry. You'll find one. Uh, you could also go to Fishtown for a man like this. They're gonna end up being a little bit different, but they're the same genre of man. Then I heard this old song. Pearly do drops drop. And I thought someday I'd be at a party in college or something, and I'd look up and see this person across the room. And from that moment, I'd know everything was going to be okay. I can guarantee all of you, you will not go to college, listen to the song Pearly Do Drops Drop, and then find the love of your life. Unfortunately, it is the sad truth. I'm sorry. Unless you are going to a party in West Philly, then it's a possibility. Why do nice people people choose the wrong people to date. We accept the love we think we deserve. Can we make them know that they deserve more? We can try. I think this is definitely true. And like relatable, like nice people dating the wrong people, you know? Um, I feel like maybe some certain people might watch this and get influenced kind of the wrong way and be like, nice guys never win. See, why is not she want to date a nice guy like me? But it took me a really, really long time. I did not understand the quote 
we accept the love we think we deserve. Like that was a huge quote from this movie. It was all over Tumblr, obviously. It's like the quote of the book. Like it's it's a thing. But now I 100% fully understand it. And it goes for so many other things. Like you can only know a person as deep as they know themselves. We accept the respect we think we deserve. We accept the love we think we deserve. We accept the care we think we deserve. It's true. I did not think I was worth more, so I accepted less because I thought that's as good as it's gonna get and to be honest that's not the truth and that's why high standards are kind of good anyway that's why I'm a firm believer in keeping your standards for like friendships and love and respect hi your first kiss I was 11 his name was Robert he used to uh, come over to the house all the time was he your first boyfriend he was my he was my dad's boss you know Charlie I used to sleep with guys you treated me like shit and uh, get wasted all the time. But now I feel like I have a chance. Like I, I could even get into a real college. Maybe at the time of watching this movie, if you were also 13, maybe you hadn't yet related to Sam's character and her opening up about her sexual assault. And whether it's the similar circumstances to what she went through, uh, as you get older, you will probably relate to Sam's story more and more. I didn't relate to Sam at all when I was 13. I was like, why can't she just like Charlie back? Like she is only a character in this movie to serve as his love interest. And then I got older and I was like, oh fuck, Sam is a very complicated and beautiful person and character. And she had a rough fucking high school experience although mine is not the same i relate to her in certain aspects i know that you know i like craig but i i want to forget about that for a minute okay i just want to make sure that the first person who kisses you loves you i love you Drew. I guess I never understood this scene fully, like even till now, like I didn't really understand why she decided to kiss him if it wasn't romantic. Looking back, I also didn't really understand why she would kiss him if it wasn't romantic. I was like, I, I don't get it. Like why, if she likes Craig, why is she kissing him? But the intention behind it is sweet is making sure that his first kiss is with someone who really cares for him. But also I'm like, oh, She's a whole senior and he's a whole freshman. Like she is literally like maybe 18 and he is 14. Ah, uh, yeah. How are you feeling, Charlie? Good. Yeah, you know what I mean? Is it bad tonight? No. No. Not picturing things anymore. Oh, and if I do, I can just shut it off. Oh, this is really tough. I get these conversations now with my family. Like, if I get alone time with my mom, she's like, yeah, okay, are you sure you're doing okay? And it's never out of pity, but I really, really, really respect how Charlie's family, like, goes about it. He has a great support system around him that is, like, constantly checking in on him, which... I didn't think would be a very common thing, especially in the early 90s, for them to be so aware of, like, you know, mental health and being supportive about it. So that's awesome. Um, and I hope I hope more people have family like he does. How are you, Chris? Amen. How are you, Chris? Amen. Ugh! Coolest scene ever. This was just like the coolest transition. I fucking love this as a kid. I like remember going to school and being like, yeah. And then there was this like sick transition. I was like in the seventh or eighth grade. I was like, there's this sick transition. And it went from being a communion wafer and then it turned into an acid tab. And I was like, all right, Nicole, I fucking love communion wafers like a lot. I get a lot around Christmas time. Like I get it. There's a lot around Christmas time, like Polish family things. Like you send them in the mail to each other. It doesn't matter. You can buy them. And so, oh, communion wafers. I Before I like switch my channel to mainly like commentary video essay, I still do some personal videos here and there, kind of, sort of, sometimes. Um, I consider making a whole like snack DIY video with communion wafers because I just thought that would be so fun. And honestly, it was it was it was just for me, just to be able to play around with communion wafers all day. Anyway, sacrilegious, get burnt at the stake for it. Anyway. It's gonna be our little secret. Mm. 
probably in a movie the most accurate representation of what PTSD memories and like flashbacks actually look like. It's very hard to describe it to people because, uh, you know, when you're not, when your PTSD isn't from being in Afghanistan and war, like it's kind of hard to describe to people. And also you don't really want to describe to people what having, having PTSD memories is like, but I especially have them really bad. Um, similar to Charlie, drug-induced, drug uh, night-induced, stress-induced. That's like kind of like for me, the, the main times that it's going to happen to me. Charlie, take off your clothes. This should have been me, like, last month. I should have volunteered myself to go up there. That's going to be my life goal, is to be in, like, Rocky Horror before I die. Just to, like, fulfill my little Charlie fantasy. That's... I, I don't like how that sounded. Sorry. It's so nice to meet you. You too, Mrs. Galmakis. Charlie tells me you're a Buddhist. A little closer together. That looks nice. Mm hmm? Buddhist, I need you to smile a little bit more. There you go. Nice. <laughs> the fucking funniest dad in the world. He's the funniest character in this movie. So funny. Imagine having a funny dad like that. Imagine having a dad. They'll be gone all night. Why were older women so interested in him? I, I guess because he was like within the friend group. But when you think about it, why were all these seniors flocking towards these friends? I, I did know a few people like that in, in high school. Like, what? Sorry, I haven't written for a while, but things are a total disaster. He's a baby. But somehow she finds new things to say. That, that, that dairy just sits with you, you know, it walks with you. She's on the phone right now? Charlie, you've got to break up with her. I can do that? For Christ's sake, I need to use the phone. Okay, I got you this book. It's really how I became a vegan. Yeah, unfortunately, I have realized that I am Mary Elizabeth, like having the conversations about veganism. Uh, I might be doing this to my boyfriend. Or at least maybe I did. I've seen my mom do that before, though. Like, she'll be on the phone with her friend. I'm exposing her right now. And she'll put the phone down and, like, walk away and do something else. I'm like, aren't you on the phone with... And she's like, shh, yeah, don't worry about it. I dare you to kiss the prettiest girl in the room on the lips. <gasps> and notice I charitably said girl and not person. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Love Bob Nelson. Bob <laughs> Oh, that's fucked up. This scene should be legally taken out of the movie forever. The movie should stop right there. Actually, I don't want to see any further. It's the worst secondhand embarrassment that I have ever experienced in my entire life. If I ever want to tell people how OCD intrusive thoughts feel, it's the same visceral, disgusting, full of shame feeling that this scene gives me. The shame the guilt, the like utter disgust in yourself. It's the same feeling that I get from this scene and it should be deleted. Imagine showing this scene to a pilgrim. Like imagine what that would do to their brains. Notice how Charlie's PTSD happened to get a lot worse when his depression and anxiety got worse because all of those like play hand in hand, obviously. That's not to say that him being good with his friends and being on good terms with them, that his PTSD would just like go away or anything like that. But it certainly does get better and the symptoms do get better when you're in a good mindset. If I'm left alone for a few too many days without seeing people, without going out, without doing something, uh, being alone, driving alone, that's when it's like really fucking hard for me. I've been spending a lot of time with Patrick. He begins every night really excited. He always says he feels free and tonight is his destiny. But after a while, he runs out of things to keep himself numb. Yeah, so I could never really relate to Patrick because I wasn't, you know, in a closeted relationship or anything like that. However, also found out rewatching this that I relate to Patrick because I do the same thing where I will keep myself so busy and surround myself with people sometimes when I just want to numb myself from remembering things. Damn, I don't have anything to say. It's just fucking sad. <laughs> Maybe I could still give you books next year. Yeah. Yeah, 
I think you could write one of them one day. Really? I was so lucky that I had some teachers and adults in my life who really believed in me because it makes the biggest difference in the world when you have people who have like made it out of the situation that you are currently in. Like it's one thing to hear it from your peers that you're doing well, uh, but it's another thing to hear it when it's, you know, adults and people that you look up to and that you respect. Such a fucking huge deal. Ugh. If there's any reason that I would ever want to become a teacher, it's for moments and experiences like this. You can't just sit there and put everybody's lives ahead of yours and think that counts as love. I don't want to be somebody's crush. I want people to like the real me. You can't put everyone's lives ahead of yours and think that's love. Oh, uh, I've caught myself and realized that sometimes I as a person will do extravagant things and do the most for certain people because I am just hoping that they will reciprocate that kind of love to me. That if I literally put me and my feelings and everything on the back burner and put them first, they will be like, wow, Nicole is such a good friend. I need to do the same thing back. And that's just not how love and friendship works nor relationships you can't literally disrespect yourself and put yourself last and put everyone else ahead of you and think that that looks like you are caring but if you knew the things that uh that were in my head most of the time you'd know what it really meant how, how much we're alike and it's also wild how much Sam is looked down upon and shamed for her trauma and the things that she's been put through. And in turn, Charlie gets a supportive family. And uh, I mean, I'm thankful for that. I'm happy that he did. But of course, it's just showing sexism that similar things happen to both of them, both of them being taken advantage of, um, both of them being assaulted. And Sam is looked as a slut. And Charlie is you know, his family is supportive and cares for him and, you know. What's wrong, Charlie? Ah, uh, all of this ending, like this entire ending of the entire movie is so, it's tough to watch. It's hard. It'll be our little secret, okay? Charlie, she's fast asleep. That's the best way to describe what a panic attack feels like and it still doesn't even like scratch the surface. In my notes, all I have is PTSD. This is a recurring panic attack feeling I have. That part. Yup, yup, yup. I would rather sit naked on a hot grill. That's my notes for the end of this movie. Mom and dad are going to be home with Chris any second. What if I wanted her to die, Candace? What? Charlie? Charlie! I think after rewatching it and showing it to so many different people in my life, uh, I think it goes so much further than just Charlie. Although he's the main character and his story is so important, uh, so is everyone else's. Even if you can't relate directly to some of the traumas that the main characters have faced, you may have experienced similar situations like being like Charlie's sister or Charlie's brother who are there and know about your, your family member's problem. I, I this. think this is an amazing movie because regardless of what age you watch it at, you will probably relate to at least one person. And as you grow older, you will probably experience little bits and pieces of every single character within this this movie but I love how this movie portrayed mental health and kind of you know the stigmas around it especially there's plenty of movies right now you know talking about mental health um, but in 2013 it wasn't so common especially for something that was you know taking place in the early 90s there is so much pain and I uh... I don't know how to not notice it. And I think it also shows how much a great support system around you can make the world of a difference. Always save you, but it makes a hell of a difference in how you are doing. And not to sound cliche, but this movie makes me feel not so alone. I said it there, I said it. I know there are people who say all these things don't happen. And there are people who forget what it's like to be 16 when they turn 17. I know these will all be stories someday, and our pictures will become old photographs. But right now, these moments are not stories. 
This is happening. 10 out of 10 movie. I've said since I've seen it, it is my favorite movie. And it may be a boring movie. However, I like that. Not too much happens. Like, it's nothing crazy. It's pretty realistic. It's pretty boring because it's, it's what happens in high school. But it all certainly makes sense. And I know so many people who have been deeply impacted by this movie. I highly recommend reading the book as well. And even though I'm 23 now, this is still my favorite little coming of age movie ever. My goal for next year is to read more books about healing and self-discovery, but I would love to see more movies about healing and self-discovery as well. You wanna come up? Come on. All right, I'm gonna end the video here because I need to pet my little therapy animal. She's not even a therapy animal. She needs therapy herself. After watching Perks Being a Wallflower twice this week, which is two times too many. I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, please make sure that you leave it a like. Also, make sure that you leave a comment if you have any book or movie recommendations that are similar to this or like I said about healing, self-discovery, coming of age at the ripe age of 23. I'm all about it. Make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty. If not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else we're gross. If you want to follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty. I'm going to go now and I'm going to try and wipe clean the memory that is I dare you to kiss the prettiest girl in the room scene because I don't need more trauma. Okay, bye-bye. Oh my God.